Somehow it has been seven years since the infamous Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. You know, that time that Nazis marched through the streets with tiki torches? Or when that car plowed through a crowd of people, killing one? Or the thing that made Donald Trump say there were very fine people on both sides of the Nazi rally? Except that last part is apparently up for debate because for the last seven years, the American right has been trying to convince all of us that we've got it all wrong. He didn't actually say that. The mainstream media is trying to lead you astray. And that argument is working. This past week, Snopes released a fact check titled, No, Trump didn't call neo-Nazis and white supremacists very fine people. The article is just a regurgitation of right-wing talking points, hinging on little linguistic technicalities rather than the actual meaning of what was behind Trump's many, many words. Essentially, Snopes argument was Trump wasn't talking about neo-Nazis and white supremacists when he talked about very fine people. He was talking about the protesters and the counter-protesters. Coincidentally, the protest was for a neo-Nazi rally and the counter-protest was people who don't like Nazis. The biggest argument for this hoax is that you're never getting enough context. The left-wing media wants to hide it from you. Trump said a lot of words and none of them were praising Nazis. So I'm gonna give you every bit of context I can. We'll go through the entire Snopes piece. We'll revisit the actual details of Charlottesville, and then we'll watch the very fine people press conference line by line. Uh, if you watch this and still think I left something out, let me know and I'll make sure to get to it. So the full title of this Snopes piece is No, Trump didn't call neo-Nazis and white supremacists very fine people. Trump's remarks about the deadly Charlottesville Unite the Right rally in 2017 remain controversial. The claim, written by Snopes reporter Tyja Perry Cook, is as follows. On August 15th, 2017, then-President Donald Trump called neo-Nazis and white supremacists who attended the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville very fine people. Now that's the claim. The Snopes rating for that claim is false. While Trump did say there were very fine people on both sides, referring to the protesters and the counter-protesters, he also said he wasn't talking about neo-Nazis and white nationalists and said those should be condemned totally. And look, that's true. Trump did say you had very fine people on both sides. But he also said this, here's the verbatim quote. I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? So that's the original piece. A day after the article went live, uh, we got the world's most confusing editor's note. Some readers have raised the objection that this fact check appears to assume Trump was correct in stating that there were very fine people on both sides of the Charlottesville incident. That is not the case. This fact check aimed to confirm what Trump actually said, not whether what he said was true or false. For the record, virtually every source that covered the Unite the Right debacle concluded it was conceived of, led by, and attended by white supremacists, and that therefore Trump was wrong. Okay, so then why are we playing semantics? If I know what he meant, and you obviously know what he meant, and virtually every source knows what he meant, then why do we have to play dumb? This story isn't about how he gave himself cover with a throwaway line. It's about how the President of the United States is willing to ally with at least friends of neo-Nazis or try to pick good ones out of a white supremacist mob. If you're gonna pretend to be a source for the truth, at least try to pretend to be intellectually honest. So yeah, I guess the Snopes article is technically right, but it's absolutely not in good faith. Let's review what actually happened at Charlottesville. The 2017 Unite the Right rally was to protest the removal of a gigantic statue of Robert E. Lee. But it wasn't the first one in Charlottesville. That summer, there had been multiple far-right protests led by Richard Spencer uh, and the KKK. Fun fact, after the rally by the KKK, the police tear-gassed the counter-protesters. You know, the ones against the KKK. But on August 11th, a group of white nationalists in ugly polo shirts wielding tiki torches marched through the University of Virginia campus. This was the Unite the Right rally that we all know today. This rally was attended by many far-right groups, from the National Socialist Movement to the Ku Klux Klan. White supremacist superstars like Richard Spencer and Nick Fuentes and David Duke were also in attendance. This crowd of chuds marched to the rotunda, where they found 30 UVA students with their arms locked holding a sign against white supremacy. The marchers surrounded them and then chanted in their faces until a brawl broke out. I will say, uh, we don't know who struck first, but we do know that one side was holding a banner against white supremacy, and the other was throwing lit tiki torches. Guess which one is which? The next day, both the number of protesters and counter-protesters grew. Throughout the day, there were fights. Uh, both sides did engage. After seeing all of the firearms and luau-themed weapons the night before, uh, counter-protesters showed up with their own shields and body armor and weapons. A common counter-protest refrain was to punch a Nazi in the face. Random people threw smoke bombs. It was chaotic. 
At 11 a.m., the city of Charlottesville declared a state of emergency and riot police cleared the scene. About three hours later, a protester named James Alex Fields drove his Dodge Challenger through a group of counter protesters. That attack resulted in the injury of 35 people, five were put in critical condition, and one died, 32-year-old Heather Heyer. Now let's go back to the Snopes article. So the author of this incredibly researched piece, Taija Perry Cook, says she looked at all the criticism and all of the claims, and here's what she found. Sure, Trump did say there were very fine people on both sides, but he was referring to the protesters and the counter-protesters. You know, everyone who was led by Nazis and chanting their Nazi slogans and waving their little swastikas, and the people who weren't. Let me just put it this way. If you wanted to protest the removal of a Confederate statue, which is like already sus and racist, but we're obviously giving fascists the benefit of the doubt here, but if you show up because you're just mad about the Robert E. Lee statue and you see this, you see the guys with their tiki torches and their blood and soil chants, and you decide to stay. I don't care if you weren't a Nazi before. Guess what, buddy? You're a Nazi now. And yes, there were whack jobs at every protest. Sometimes protests get out of control. This is true for literally any large gathering of humans, from a social movement, to a concert, to a religious festival. But it's on the leadership of that movement or event to condemn and stand apart from hate and irresponsibility. And surprise, surprise, when it comes to Charlottesville, it turns out far-right figures actually liked it, or at least just wanted to blame Antifa or whatever. So yeah, as you could probably tell by the editor's note, this was really embarrassing for Snopes. I don't think the author is necessarily malicious. I think she probably just reads a lot of shit online and wanted to get something out there. Maybe she wanted to seem fair with both sides. I really have no idea. But either way, she's playing by high school debate rules. Bad faith arguments are fine, as long as you are technically right. Now I know some people are thinking right now that I didn't provide enough context. So guess what? We're gonna go through every line of Trump's very fine people remarks, and it's gonna take forever. So Trump's first response to the Unite the Right rally took place about a half hour before the terror attack that would kill Heather Heyer. Trump tweeted this, We all must be united and condemn all that hate stands for. There is no place for this kind of violence in America. Let's come together as one. What kind of violence, Donald? You want to be specific? Shortly after this, he tweeted Charlottesville sad because uh, that's what presidents do. Two hours later and post-car attack, Trump finally gave us a four minute video where he said this. I'm not gonna show the whole clip because it's, you know, four minutes and that's not the one we're talking about. But if you're worried about context, here's where you can find it. The terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides, on many sides. It's been going on for a long time in our country. Trump never mentions the term white supremacy in that speech. So yeah, people were understandably curious about what hatred, bigotry, and violence on all sides meant, including Tim Scott, Marco Rubio, and his own daughter. Pressure got so bad that the next day, Trump released a statement that was obviously read off a teleprompter. Uh, here's a clip. To anyone who acted criminally in this weekend's racist violence, you will be held fully accountable. Justice will be delivered. As I said on Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. I think we can all agree that's a good move, if not a little late. It did kind of sound like a kid being forced to apologize, but like, the bar is so low at this point, sure. All Trump had to do was stay the course. He had a press conference in New York the next day. All he had to do was talk about infrastructure, which granted he did for seven minutes. But then he got this question. I didn't wait long. What, why did I didn't wait long. Like I didn't wait long. I wanted to make sure, unlike most politicians, that what I said was correct, not make a quick statement. The statement I made on Saturday, the first statement, was a fine statement. But you don't make statements that direct unless you know the fact. It takes a little while to get the facts. You still don't know the facts. Okay, but like we did know the facts. David Duke was there. There are videos of guys chanting, Jews will not replace us. This isn't like hearsay. As you'll see, diversion is pretty much Trump's 
only tactic on this. Trump starts with, you know, we don't have all the facts, we don't know who the bad guys are or the really bad guys are. You gotta get all the facts. We love journalism, don't we, folks? But as he gets more and more agitated, Trump descends pretty fast in attacking the alt-left. He repeatedly insists that these crazy leftists, i.e. people who wanted to protest against Nazis, were not only more violent than the original rally goers, but also instigated any violence there. It's a rewriting of history in real time, plain and simple. One side marched through the street chanting, Jews will not replace us. The other side didn't do that. One side was organized, attended, and cheered on by Nazis, the other side wasn't. And one side had a guy drive his car into a crowd killing a woman. The other side didn't. Anyway, let's hear about how much Trump loves facts. And it's a very, very uh, important process to me. And it's a very important statement. So I don't want to go quickly and just make a statement for the sake of making a political statement. I want to know the facts. If you go back to my, in fact, I brought it, I brought it. I brought it. Uh, you did find time to tweet Charlottesville sad, like almost immediately after the car thing. So, um, cool. As I said on, remember this, Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And then I went on from there. Now, here's the thing as to, excuse me, excuse me. Take it nice and easy. Here's the thing. When I make a statement, I like to be correct. I want the facts. Ah yes, serial fact checker Donald Trump. The only man who waits before he tweets. The only president who hasn't had a gag order for insane off-the-cuff ranting. He wants the facts. This event just happened. In fact, a lot of the event didn't even happen yet as we were speaking. This event just happened. Before I make a statement, I need the facts. So I don't want to rush into a statement. So making the statement when I made it, was excellent. Sure. In fact, the young woman who I hear is a fantastic young woman, and it was on NBC, her mother wrote me and said through, I guess, Twitter, social media, the nicest things. And I very much appreciated that. I hear she was a fine, really actually an incredible young woman. But her mother on Twitter thanked me for what I said. Okay, so it is true Heather Heyer's mother did thank Trump for his remarks. The ones from the day before, August 14th. Uh, the ones from the teleprompter. But after everything Trump is about to say in this press conference, Heyer's mother will refuse to speak to Trump. And honestly, if the press were not fake, and if it was honest, the press would have said what I said was very nice. But unlike you and unlike, excuse me, unlike you and unlike the media, before I make a statement, I like to know the facts. Trump tries to pivot back to the economy, but reporters understandably want to talk about Charlottesville. Luckily, one reporter figured out how to marry the two together. They don't. They don't. They don't. How about, how about a couple of... How about a couple of infrastructure questions? Was that terrorism? Say it, what? Not at all. I think uh, the country, look, you take a look. Uh, I've created over a million jobs since I'm president. The country is booming. The stock market is setting records. We have the highest employment numbers we've ever had in the history of our country. We're doing record business. We have the highest levels of enthusiasm. So the head of Walmart, who I know, who's a very nice guy, was making a political statement. I mean, oh, him how he's doing. Right. I do it the but same it way. And you know why? Okay, but like, be for real, because you're doing it kind of different right now. Because I want to make sure when I make a statement that the statement is correct. And there was no way, there was no way of making a correct statement that early. I had to see the facts, unlike a lot of reporters, unlike a lot of reporters, I didn't know David Duke was there. I wanted to see the facts. And the facts, as they started coming out, were very well stated. In fact, everybody said his statement was beautiful. If he would have made it sooner, that would have been good. I couldn't have made it sooner because I didn't know all of the facts. Oh my God, man, it sounds like you're talking about David Duke. Stop making this worse for yourself. I've never seen someone bomb so hard on the easiest question in the world. It's really no wonder we got this at the presidential debates. Right. Who would you like me to condemn? Proud, proud boys. Proud boys. 
stand back and stand by. He's like the Sisyphus of not alienating Nazis. Frankly, people still don't know all of the facts. It was very important, excuse me, excuse me. It was very important to me to get the facts out and correctly. Because if I would have made a fast statement, and the first statement was made without knowing much other than what we were seeing. The second statement was made after, with knowledge, with great knowledge. There's still things, excuse me, there's still things that people don't know. I want to make a statement with knowledge. I wanted to know the facts. We get it. You are Mr. Facts. Was this ter- two questions. Was this terrorism? And can you tell us how you're feeling about your chief strategist? Well, I think the driver of the car is a disgrace to himself, his family, and this country. And that is, you can call it terrorism. You can call it murder. You can call it whatever you want. I would just call it as the fastest one to come up with a good verdict. That's what I'd call it. Because there is a question. Is it murder? Is it terrorism? And then you get into legal semantics. The driver of the car is a murderer. And what he did was a horrible, horrible, inexcusable thing. I mean, I am glad Trump said driving a car into a crowd of people is bad. I'm also glad he said it's murder. I do think it's weird he's insistent on not calling it terrorism. It feels kind of like an easy dunk. But like overall, he got the right answer on this. So to balance that out, he says a bunch of nice things about Steve Bannon. Can you tell us how you're feeling about your chief strategist, Mr. Bannon? Can you talk about that? I would echo Maggie's question. Uh, Steve Bannon is- I never spoke to Mr. Bannon about it. Tell us broadly what your, do you have, still have confidence well, in Well, we'll see. And look, look, I like Mr. Bannon. He's a friend of mine. But Mr. Bannon came on very late. You know that. I went through 17 senators, governors, and I won all the primaries. Mr. Bannon came on very much later than that. Uh, and I like him. He's a good man. Uh, he is not a racist. I can tell you that. He's a good person. He actually gets a very unfair press in that regard. He's a good person, and I think the press treats him, frankly, very unfairly. So for those who don't know a bunch about Bannon, Trump just praised his chief strategist at the time. Bannon is known as an architect for far-right and white nationalist ideology in America. Uh, He sucks, and I don't know why you would tie your horse to him right now. Do you have confidence in him? National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster against the I did it the last time. And he called on it again, linking the Senator team. McCain. Oh, this is going to be so good. Right, Senator saying, McCain, you mean the one yes. who voted against uh, Obamacare? And he said who that is Senator, he, You mean Senator McCain who voted against Senator, us getting good health care? Senator McCain yeah. said that the alt-right is behind these attacks, and he linked that same group to those who perpetrated the attack in Charlottesville. Well, I I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm sure Senator McCain must know what he's talking about. Uh, But when you say the alt-right, uh, define alt right to me. You define it. Go ahead. Well, I'm saying, as no, Senator define it for me. Come on, let's go. Define Senator McCain defined them as the same group. Okay, what about the alt the left that came McCain. charging him? Excuse me. What about the alt left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? So like we talked about before, the alt-left was actually the counter-protesters against Nazis. Before arriving the next day, new counter-protesters took note of the body armor and weapons and firearms uh, that were on display and in some cases used and decided to bring some of their own. And no matter what you think of that, it was a response to a first move by the white supremacists who were there that night. In terms of who came charging, it was the alt-right who surrounded those students at UVA. It was the alt-right who threw lit tiki torches at them. And it was the alt-right who drove a car into a crowd. So tell me who should feel guilty. This is what, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute, I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. This should be a no-brainer on a political, if not a human level. But no, Trump has to invent an imaginary enemy, even if that enemy's goal is fighting fascism and racism. It's mind-boggling. I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. Wait, I thought you didn't have all the facts. And you have... Uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. 
and nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. You had a group, you had a group on the other side that came charging in without a permit, and they were very, very violent. So yeah, the neo-Nazis might be bad and drove a car into a crowd, but it's the non-neo-Nazis. Those are the guys you ought to worry about. They didn't get a permit. Go ahead. Do you think that the, what you call the alt-left is the same as neo-Nazis? I, oh, those people, all of those people, excuse me, I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups, but not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. So here's where I think it's impossible to say Trump didn't praise neo-Nazis. Because if you're joining a neo-Nazi rally led by neo-Nazis with swastikas in the crowd for somehow non-neo-Nazi reasons, then you are now a neo-Nazi. There is no excuse, no statue that can justify agreeing with Hitler. That's just not how it works. But of course, not everyone agrees with me. Those people were also there because they wanted to protest the taking down of a statue, Robert E. Lee. So, excuse me, and you take a look at some of the groups and you see, and you know it if you were honest reporters, which in many cases you're not, but many of those people were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. So, this week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? Okay, Robert E. Lee was literally a traitor to the country, and so was Stonewall Jackson. I mean, personally, for me, I don't really care if the founding fathers have statues. I don't really care about honoring a guy who bought teeth from slaves or used them as broodmares. There are so many other cool people in American history to honor instead. But also, like, at least Washington and Jefferson are founding fathers. Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson tried to take down the country. But they were there to protest, excuse me, you take a look the night before, they were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. Infrastructure question, go ahead. Should statues of Robert E. Lee stay up? I would say that's up to a local town, community, or the federal government, depending on where it is located. Okay, so like, why are we mad then? Because the city council of Charlottesville voted to remove the statue, so like, it should be fine. You know what, forget it, let's complain about Obama. Are you against the Confederacy? <laughs> race relations in America, and do you think things have gotten worse or better since you took office? I think they've gotten better or the same. I look, they've been frayed for a long time, and you can ask President Obama about that because he'd make speeches about it. But I believe that the fact that I've brought in, it will be soon, millions of jobs. You see where companies are moving back into our country. I think that's going to have a tremendous positive impact on race relations. We have companies coming back into our country. We have two car companies that just announced. We have Foxconn in Wisconsin just announced. We have many companies, I say pouring back into the country. I think that's going to have a huge positive impact on race relations. You know why? It's jobs. What people want now, they want jobs. They want great jobs with good pay. And when they have that, you watch how race relations will be. And I'll tell you, we're spending a lot of money on the inner cities. We're going to fix, we're fixing the inner cities. We're doing far more than anybody's done with respect to the inner cities. It's a priority for me. And it's very important. Trump could only pivot to the economy for so long before a reporter brought him back to his waking nightmare. Are you putting what you're calling the alt-left and white supremacists on the same moral plane? I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other and they came at each other with clubs and it was vicious and it was horrible and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. <laughs> On both sides, sir? You said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Uh, are well, I do think, think there's blame, the yes. I think there's blame on both sides. You look, at, you look at both sides, I think there's blame on both sides. And I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. And, oh, and, 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 and if you reported it accurately, you would say. The blame on both sides in Charlottesville is the blame on both sides of any fascist movement. One side plays the target, one side plays the bully. And if the target ever stands up to the bully, even non-violently, the bully cries foul. Even when they started the entire thing. Neo 
not killed the person. This. Heather Heyer in Charlottesville. They, started, they showed up in Charlottesville Excuse me. to protest. Excuse me. They didn't they didn't the 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 and you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group. Excuse me. Excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. I thought we were leaving it up to the city. No? Not this time? Okay. Washington, Wait, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now are we going to take down his statue? This whole thing is just so boring. He is on a loop. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history, you're changing culture, and you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits, and with the helmets and with the baseball bats, you got a, you had a lot of bad you had a lot of bad people in the other group too. Oh no! How could the press treat his neo-Nazi buddies like that? You know the ones that are somehow not neo-Nazis. Also, black outfits and black helmets are illegal now. Thank you. You were treated unfairly, sir. I'm sorry. I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly. No, I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look, they were people protesting very quietly, the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day it looked like they had some rough, bad people. Neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, I'd probably wager there were bad guys here. One people, one nation, and immigration! I do love the idea of just like a hypothetical good guy on the sidelines. So engulfed in the beauty that is Robert E. Lee, so obsessed with the Confederate general, he can't even register the neo-Nazi chants around him. Such a pure soul. It is kind of insane though that Trump's best case scenario is a few guys were having a temper tantrum over their loser statue. Like, I'm sorry, that's just not a good look. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this. There are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country. A horrible moment. But there are two sides to the country. Does anybody have a final? Does anybody have? You have an infrastructure. I think my biggest takeaway from all of this is um, you can do anything as long as you have a permit. Also, how insulting is it to label half the country as neo-Nazis? Like he's essentially saying you're either anti-racist or you're marching through the streets with a fleece vest chanting Jews will not replace us. There has to be a third option. Do you think you can get an infrastructure bill? You didn't get health care. You well, you know, I'll tell you, more. we came very close with health care. Unfortunately, John McCain decided to vote against it at the last minute. You'll have to ask John McCain and why he did that. Like I said, I'm not clipping any of this short because I'm not going to be accused of removing context. But we came very close to health care. We will end up getting health care, uh, but we'll get the infrastructure. And actually, infrastructure is something that I think we'll have bipartisan support on. I actually think I, I actually think Democrats will go along with the infrastructure. After talking about infrastructure for way too long, we returned to Heather Heyer's mom, who, as I said before, will refuse to speak to Trump after this. President, have you spoken to the family? Have you spoken to the family of the victim of the car attack? No, I'll be reaching out. I'll be reaching out. When will you be reaching out? I was very. I, I thought that the statement put out, uh, the the mother's statement, I thought was a beautiful statement. I was telling you, it was it was something that I really appreciated. I thought it was terrific, and really under the under the kind of. Uh, stress that she's under and the heartache that she's under, I thought putting out that statement to me was really something I won't forget. Thank you all very much. Thank you. We also learned that Trump knows a lot about Charlottesville. Thank you. Do you plan to go to Charlottesville, Mr. President?
house in Charlottesville. Will you go to Charlottesville? Does anyone know I own a house in Where Charlottesville? Where is it? Oh, boy. It's going to be... It's in Charlottesville. You'll see. Is it Where is the winery or something? It's a, it is the winery. I mean, I know a lot about Charlottesville. Charlottesville is a great place that's been very badly hurt over the last couple of days. But I, own, I own actually one of the largest wineries in the United States. It's in Charlottesville. And has lots of ideas on how to overcome racial divides. What do you think needs to be done to overcome the racial divides? Well, I really think jobs can have a big impact. I think if we continue to create jobs over a million, substantially more than a million, and you see just the other day the car companies coming in with Fox, you know, Fox. I think if we continue to create jobs at levels that I'm, that I'm creating jobs, I think that's going to have a tremendous impact, positive impact on race relations. And, and, what, and what you said today, how do you think that will impact the racial because the people are going to be working, they're going to be making a lot of money, much more money than they ever thought but possible. I mean, your remarks so that's today. going to happen. And the other thing, very important, I believe wages will start going up. They haven't gone up for a long time. I believe wages now, because the economy is doing so well with respect to employment and unemployment, I believe wages will start to go up. I think that'll have a tremendously positive impact on race relations. Why have been drawn to you, Mr. President? Was Frank Howard wiretap? So there you go, the infamous Very Fine People press conference with total context. After hearing all of that, tell me this. Did that sound like a president fighting against hate? Or did it sound like a politician who was terrified of alienating his base?